the beast. This truck has been with me for about six years. It was my first Axial SCX-10 build and it kind of morphed and changed over time and I added things and took it to TTCs and you know really kind of tweaked and tuned and beat the crap out of it really. So over time I learned what to make strong and what really suit my own driving style. So People often ask me what tires are on it. They are 2.2s. Uh, they are Traxxas sledgehammers. I have them mounted on uh, G-made inflatable rims. Now, basically, it's just a plastic rim that's got a, a, a small grommet for air inflation, uh, and it comes with a, like kind of a bicycle pump thing. And so you can inflate your tires uh, and give it as much or as little air as you want on the inside, which is great when it's warm, but when it's cold like it is now, it can kind of hurt the performance because as the air shrinks, you know, it kind of sucks the tire in, especially when the rubber starts to firm up in the cold. Now this here, these are the standard axial uh, axles that I have in there, all pre-greased, but not too much because in the winter time, you know, of course, grease will get thicker and, and it puts extra strain on your motors, especially if you're running a single. This here, I believe, Leave is a level three RC uh, three link truss because I wanted a three link suspension in the back. You can see that these, uh, I believe they're MSR shocks. Uh, Intigy used to make them MSR 10 or something like that. Uh, you can actually tune them very, very well um, for what they are. You can run them sprung or in droop mode, or you can run them with or without oil. They're actually awesome. Uh, back uh, trailer uh, hitch that I have. I can't remember where I got that, but it, that's what it is. Uh, down to the old frame that I've had forever. These are side mount posts for the body. I don't actually use top clips or back clips with the uh, Claude Buster body I run. As we move up the drive line, it's a Punisher drive shaft from RC Four Wheel Drive. Uh, Robinson Racing Product 92 uh, tooth spur gear, I believe, at a 48 pitch. Level 3 RC dual brushed or brushless uh, motor mount plate. Can't remember. I think it's a, just having a closer look, 24 tooth pinion I have on each because I'm running dual Tekken 35 turn brushed motors. All of this mounted onto a Vanquish uh, Products aluminum uh, transmission, which has all steel driveline in there, and into the front, where I'm housing a 3S LiPo inside a splash container that I made out of Gorilla Tape. A lot of people ask me about Gorilla Tape. What is it? It's literally what I say, uh, a kind of a fiber tape that's, you know, it's very versatile, almost like duct tape is, but even better. <laughs> so I kind of molded and, and folded and, and made this battery holder and splash guard from the mud, and I'll show you in a second how that works, to hold my winch controller which I waterproofed. Uh, the RX-8 Tekken 1.8 scale controller, I waterproofed that as well, just by opening it up and uh, getting in there with some Plasti Dip and a waterproof uh, spectrum receiver. On the front, uh, RC Rock Armor bumper uh, with a uh, 1 tenth scale winch on the front, but I switched out the original cable for some 100 pound fishing line and a Kong hook. A lot of people also comment and say that my tires seem to go in quite a bit, and I agree, they do. I kept this steering link a little bit shorter because as it starts to climb and the dirt gets in there, it's kind of getting squeezed as the tires are rotated, and it gives it some pretty good grip, i found at least. So there we go, there is a Savox waterproof servo I have on an aluminum steering horn to keep it nice and strong, and aluminum C-hubs uh, for the steering because, you know, under any kind of torque with a strong servo and powerful motors, you can snap out those plastic ones and it's these red parts uh, that I'm, I'm uh, showing you right now. So there you go. 
here you can see underneath. Now, a, a lot of you are looking at my drive shaft angles. This one's not so bad because I've clocked the, uh, the axle forward a bit. This one here looks like it would cause a lot of hopping. Uh, actually, I don't have that problem at all. And maybe it's because I've got this bit of slop in the drivetrain itself. Of course, because it's rounded out uh, in the, um, uh, that little socket, right? So probably that's why I don't see too much suffering from it. But with that much power, it just powers right through. I've got uh, heavy duty gears in the front and the back, of course. And these links are actually Delrin which is a type of plastic that's, that's very slippery. I got these links from Blue Monkey, I believe. Original normal skid plate for the transmission to mount up on. And like I said, I kind of clocked this axle forward. So let me just move it here. So you can actually see that the drive shaft is not that badly uh, elbowed. This one is, but again, it's really not that bad. I haven't noticed too much over time. So old Claude Buster, uh, classic bod right here. There is where I keep the separate battery for the uh, overhead LED, so it's not sapping any power from this three cell, 5,000 milliamp um, battery, LiPo. It powers these two and the servos no problem and the light has an independent power source. So the headlights though, they do plug into the receiver. So working winch, there's a monster truck. Let's take it outside. It's pretty darn cold today, but I'm waiting for snow. So we might as well take it out and have some fun. Ooh, he is cold today. Now I will be the first to admit that these tires are not the best tires for this type of cold, uh, especially when you're dealing with a lot of ice because though it has spikes, each one of the tires have spikes, uh, as soon as you hit like a, a hard ice patch, you basically lose a lot of surface area. You know, the spikes keep the flat part of the tire away from the surface. We've had an ice fog set in and everything is crunchy. I think it's a good time to hit up the old course, even though it's frosty, and see what this truck can do. Into the drop. Down we go. Controlled. A lot of people will ask and say, why would I have two motors? And really two motors certainly help with uh, when I need extra torque, especially when I have larger tires. Here we go around and up. The ground, everything is quite frozen. Nice, those motors pulling easily all the way up. Even with a large circumference of tire, you gotta be careful of the pinion you run. Too many teeth on that pinion and it can run your single motor very, very warm. Nice climb for the old Chevy. Now usually this is a nice gully, but it looks like it's been frosted in. Gate number three, up and over. A little bit of suspension flex here. Even in the cold, it's performing well. Oh, come on. Good, good, good. Fairly easy, but in the cold, it's very unpredictable. Looking good, looking good. I'm at that point in the season where it's almost an awkward stage for radio control because it's very cold, easy to snap things at high speed, but then again it becomes very easy to start doing scaling uh, because everything's much firmer and you can get around easy. <laughs> nice. You can hear, even with dual motors, still very quiet. <laughs> 